Hey, welcome back to another episode of VVG, your firewood restoration station. Working on the old great pumpkin here, looking like it's kind of getting back together. But the next thing we're going to do is install a tail panel. So if you've never put one of these on there, want some idea how to make it go, how to make it fit, and you know, get it into place and properly secure it, I guess I'll stop rambling. Basically, we're going to put this dude on the back of this car and make it go. If you want to see how it's done, check it out. All right, things will need this go around. Got some vice grips, the extra wide open jaw, so we can actually do the uh, reach around. Uh, insert joke there and of course you got the brick he's always here for support and myself tapping screws love the heck out of these things you can typically reuse these screws a couple two three times so to how few you guys probably typically reuse your underwear turning it inside out and backwards not that i recommend that but these screws are fantastic tape measure i got my tape measures i got stanley and stan layla and mr dewalt to make the screws and the drill bit work for getting all the plug wells going but first thing we're going to need to do though is i've already got the center point located on the trunk pan from previous works so we got that already established we need to find the center line of this tail panel inner tail panel so that we can get it in position then once we get our position this way then we got tied into we have the two fuel tank supports which actually holds the straps holds the tank in that tail panel actually attaches these three points and then similar on the frame rails left side right side we have three points that need to be attached on both sides so once you get all said and done we got basically five surfaces to the floor here uh, the two gas tank straps and the frame rail so the first thing though Need to find the center point, get it up into place, and then see how well it lines up with these. Here we go. Got a couple of schools of thought. How do I find the center of this panel? Because these edges aren't exactly square or true, so it's kind of hard to make a call. Um, these holes are pretty close to evenly spaced to center line, and so is the actual opening here. Um, for who knows what, this opening's in here behind the license plate, but you can actually measure this opening, find the center point, only from the inside of that hole, inside that hole. And that's how I'm going to define the center point of this trunk, or sorry, the trunk core. Uh, so five and a quarter. So half that, for the guys, you can do math really quick in your heads, two and five eighths. So that's put my little mark at two and five eighths. And then if I do from the inside of that one to that one, it's like, 35, hold on, 35 and a half. So divide that by two is 17 and three quarters. Yeah, we're gonna call that center. Now something else that I've done here, made some marks. If you look at it here carefully, you'll see these little marks here. And I should line up, kind of like help me out because I'm gonna be kind of shooting blind here. From the tail panel so i gotta go through this tail panel into that and climbing underneath the car come this way it's kind of hard to get in there so i'm gonna try to hit the screws through this side of the panel this way so this is a reference mark to kind of give me an idea where i'm going did the same thing here to the frame rails you look at it straight on well that gives you a real good idea where you need to hit those things out there so same as this side here so make your little marks beforehand at least that's what i'm going to do see if it's going to make that simpler to find where i need to attach that because i know that line here on this body panel lands up right here below this so that's my height so i can kind of eyeball eh, where i need to hit that hopefully that's going to work now next thing is get that little mark lined up with this right here and this is my center line but i'm gonna get the tape out of the way and then when this panel goes on there's a flange that all mounts to here um you're going to be about a quarter inch in from the edge there's where it's going to end up residing when it's all said and done but let's get it clamped in place to see how well it fits so center line that's pretty self-explanatory about a quarter inch it feels like it kind of fell into place so reach around pliers in here hopefully it'll do what it says i'll get you underneath here and take a look you can see how the frame rails pulled up real tight to the tail panel same as the fuel tank support straps so that's actually looking really nice as for fitment so and then if you want to see what it looks like here straight up across the back you can see it's about a quarter inch flange there and actually looking really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some screws this way through the panel and then in through these things here to tie it to the back of the car. Now, time to start screwing around. Now, actually, we've already identified our location where the frame rolls are at. So I'm gonna get it pulled against the frame. See how that looks. <laughs> Definitely hit something solid. So, that's really nice. And now with the other flanges right there, so do the same thing. Oops. 
need to come in a little bit. I just want to go on the outside of that frame rail. So if I actually sit back and strip, look at my line, I, I even drew it wrong. I mean, that's right on, but I did it in the wrong spot. So bring it over just a little bit. <laughs> Much better. Now we'll do the same this way. Throw a couple screws into the floor. Now you can tell these screws get used quite a few times. It's kind of like, you know, you know when it's time to change your underwear? They just don't work anymore. So in that case, that one's scrap. You can normally get two to three uses out of them. Got it all finished, screwed into place, tied into the frame. That's the one I goofed up on. Like I said, if I would have actually looked at my marks, you can see straight down, I was on the outside of that. So the marks did work good, but you have to pay attention to them. But got the screws all laid across top into the braces here. This sticker looks awfully familiar. Still says made in Taiwan. Hmm. Anyway, that's a whole other story for another day. And I missed on that one. So I didn't do too bad for saying kind of stab it in the dark. That actually it was lined up the right distance this way but that bracket's so small i'll show you on the inside it's just such a small tab to be able to snag it so that's all tied into place nice now what i'll do is i'll show you the inside but then what we'll do is come back now take these screws out and prep them for plug welding right here on the inside you can see there are stabs through the frame rail is pretty nice hit the supports that one's a little low but it's going to work looks pretty similar to factory and there's the one that i missed because well i just missed so as i say pretty good for flying blind stabbing them all into the spots where they need to be so once you get those screws out and get busy with doing some spot welds. All right, now look at these screws. What I do, this is just my technique. You do how you want, or if someone else showed you a more good or a better way, hey, do it how you want. But this is how I have done it. Works great for me. But what I'll do now is these screws are great pilot holes. Uh, I've got a couple ways to keep this in mind. I'm going to take every other screw out so it kind of keeps it in place. Then I'll actually drill out. So I'm really working on two layers. I'll drill the first layer of metal. It's about a quarter inch drill, but just drill through the first layer. I'll do these until we can see them. And I'll, of course, probably take these and melt, weld them from the top side, because upside down, that's just a, that's a whole nother mess to try to weld. But I'll do a couple here right quick. And this is how I uh, we use the screws. All right, now, I'll just do these two first, and then you'll get the idea. Change the DeWalt to the drill mode. And then we'll drill through just the top one. Alright. Now these two are ready to weld. I'll get my welder all set up here. And what I'll do is I'll be able to fill that hole in starting just about the 12 o'clock position. And just do a little circle with the welder. And it actually lays in really flat and looks super similar to the factory spot weld. And you do it right, you don't have to do any grinding or buffing on it. You can see what I've done. That's my miss spot, but see how it lays out real flat and resembles a spot weld. And even the inside looks very similar too. So that's got good penetration. I'm gonna say it's gonna hold better than the factory spot weld. So now I'm gonna go through and do all of these just the same. Um, see if I can get you on the inside so you can see it. What it looks like on the back side. Here's what it looks like on the inside. It's just above that screw head there. It's kind of hard to get the camera up in there, but you can see it penetrated full depth of that hole. So I can promise to you that it has good structural ability to keep that thing together. So again, there's probably more than one technique to do these little spot welds, put these cars back together, but that's just how I've done it. And I feel very confident that it's gonna hold. Now it's gotta do a whole bunch more of them here.
67, 68 first gen F body. Pretty cut and dry and simple. Now, like I said, if you get these welds mastered, there's there's no height to that at all. And they actually resemble the spot weld a lot. All you gotta do now is either wire brush or sandblast all this off before you paint it and then to prevent corrosion. But no real buffing needed, actually, which is really nice. And the other thing is, was doing it is doing the screw and then clamp and the screw and then clamp. And it has that thing pulled up super tight. The two panels have actually laid up really, really nice to each other. So I'm gonna give this one actually an A or an A plus. This came out really nice. And on the inside, looks just as nice too. You don't have to really do anything besides clean up where the paint burned off there. So no real buffing or anything on the welds. This actually hold up and look really good. There you have it. one more piece of the puzzle completed on the Great Pumpkin Project. Uh, anyway, the inner tail panel, not that big of a deal necessarily to put that on there. Pretty simple cut and dry. If anything, hopefully you learned a little something how to do some spot welds or plug welds, make them look nice, hold in tight. And again, there's probably more than one way to do that. Maybe you've got a better technique. Please keep using what you like. This is just what I do and seems to work very good. Next go around, we have some trunk drop offs yet to do outer wheelhouses, quarter panels. And that's going to about wrap us up for the old sheet metal on the great pumpkin. Well, I guess I have the outer tail panel. So anyway, it's coming together quite quickly here. I've got the whole floor pans all done, frame rails, rocker panels. We're, we're making some great progress. So hope you're getting something out of this here. The goal of this channel is to keep you motivated on your projects just the same. So while doing this, if there's any questions, there's any more detailed area you'd like to see, let me know. I'll put it on the dry erase board up there, my list of things to do for videos for you. Um, because I'd like to keep you motivated and your project going because my goal is to save as many birds as I can. Necessarily not by me, but maybe you. And of course, I've also got some other things coming down the road, some more. Uh, I guess you get field calls. I'm going to do some more traveling here. I got maybe a trip to Pennsylvania, a trip to Mississippi, and I got a couple other ones in the works. I haven't worked out all the details yet, but I'm going to keep helping out you guys with your cars just the same. So you got your project, let me know. I'll put it on the list and we'll come with some kind of process to pick where I'm going next. But nonetheless, I'm all out of Orange Mountain Dew. There is none available, so it's not been the greatest of days. So I'm going to have to find some kind of supplement drink to get me by, but uh, I've had enough fun playing in the garage yet here today because it's hot and sunny and I've got what I wanted to get done. Hope you enjoyed what you see here. Get the camera out next time. Work on some more of these bits and parts of this car. And uh, we'll see you then.